This video will explore the reasons why the Mayflower and Speedwell spent two weeks in Southampton, the individuals involved, and the events that unfolded in the town that contributed to the beginning of America. It's August 15, 1620, two ships, the Mayflower and the Speedwell, set sail from Southampton, England, bound for North America. This seemingly ordinary departure was actually a momentous event, as the passengers on these ships would go on to shape America as we know it today. The Mayflower and Speedwell carried passengers known as the Pilgrims, seeking a better life in the New World. They spent two weeks in Southampton before setting sail, during which time they made repairs to the Speedwell and prepared for their long journey. Although many Southampton features would be recognizable to the Pilgrims today, its waterline has changed due to much reclaimed land in the early 1900s. This is Southampton today. Now, let us slowly go back in time to 1620 and see the changes. This is West Gate, where the pilgrims left to board the Mayflower and Speedwell. Many people think the Mayflower and Speedwell's departure was from Plymouth, England. Well, actually, the settlers and separatists met and departed from the port of Southampton. This is that same West Gate today. Southampton is deeply entrenched in the narrative of the Mayflower's voyage, hosting numerous significant events in its historic old town that played a crucial role in the success of this historically significant undertaking. However, the question arises, what prompted the Mayflower and the Speedwell to choose Southampton as their starting point and what characterized the city during the pivotal year of 1620? The response to the initial inquiry encompasses two key aspects. Firstly, to endure the journey and the initial months in America successfully, it was imperative to acquire substantial food supplies. Additionally, essential tools, building equipment, weapons and armor were necessary. Considering the strenuous manual labor involved in clearing land and constructing homes, the settlers also had to bring cloth, linen, and thread for clothing repairs and new garments. Southampton emerged as the optimal location for securing these supplies, given its status as a bustling port and a regular hub for ship provisioning. Secondly, and more importantly, the ships needed somewhere safe to rendezvous. The Speedwell was sailing from Holland with religious separatists aboard, and if caught they risked imprisonment, and their leaders possibly executed. The Mayflower was sailing from Rotherhithe in London with settlers aboard. By coming to Southampton, it was hoped that the supplies could be quickly loaded and the two ships made ready to leave in a few days before their presence could be reported to church officials or to the King's men. In the event, essential repairs were needed for the Speedwell, which delayed the ship's departure for two weeks. Fortunately, the separatists remained undiscovered prior to sailing. The main entrance to the town was across a fixed bridge and through the bar gate where the ground floor was used as a prison. As well as streets lined with shops and businesses, there were several markets including a fish market by St. Michael's Church and a butter, egg, poultry and cheese market under the audit house by Holyrood Church. A meat market was located near God's House Tower. John Carver and Christopher Martin had strong ties to Southampton and the Mayflower. They were entrusted with the task of procuring goods and supplies essential for the sea voyage and the initial period in America. Their responsibility extended to ensuring these provisions were prepared and ready for loading onto the West Quay upon the arrival of the two ships. Throughout several weeks in July 1620, they engaged in purchasing supplies from the local traders in the town. In addition to provisions, they sought tools and indispensable items crucial for home construction. In 1620, Southampton was renowned for its cloth trade, owing to the Walloon refugees residing in the town. These refugees were instrumental in producing a fabric known as Hampton Surge, 
available for purchase from the cloth hall situated above the fish market. Due to John Carver's affiliations with the Walloons in Leiden, it is plausible that he formed connections with local Walloon families, potentially even participating in worship at their church on Winkle Street. Adjacent to the West Gate, the Linen Hall offered linen suitable for crafting shirts and undergarments. John Carver, a respected separatist, had married Mary Delanoy, a Walloon, in 1609 in Leiden. Unfortunately, Mary passed away the same year, likely due to childbirth complications. Carver later wedded Catherine White, a Leiden separatist and sister of Bridget, the wife of the separatist's pastor, John Robinson. Carver became the inaugural governor of the Plymouth colony, but both he and Catherine succumbed in the spring of 1621, leaving no descendants. The story of the journey of the Mayflower in 1620 is really the story of two ships, the Mayflower and the Speedwell. The Mayflower was the larger of the two ships. She was part owned by Christopher Jones, her master. At the bottom of the ship was a large hold where all the supplies and effects were stored. Above this was the main deck where the passengers lived. This was very cramped with about 20 feet by 70 feet of living space. Stored here as well as ship's equipment was a shallop or small boat that had been part dismantled and was planned to be used for exploring inland bays and rivers in America. The upper deck of the Mayflower provided space for exercise and fresh air during the crossing. The second ship was the Speedwell. She was much smaller than the Mayflower. She was therefore much more cramped for the passengers than the Mayflower. In fact, the Speedwell was leaking when she arrived in Southampton from Leiden, South Holland, with separatists aboard and had to be repaired. The ship would have been careened on the beach and her caulking checked and repaired. In a letter to a friend, Robert Cushman wrote, the Speedwell was intentionally run aground on a beach so that its hull could be inspected, trimmed, repaired. Twice in Southampton before the ship was considered seaworthy. The repairs kept the ships in Southampton for longer than planned and it was on the 15th of August, 1620, with 120 passengers aboard that the two ships finally set sail. Even then, the Speedwell continued to take on water, forcing them to stop in Dartmouth for repairs. They set sail again and were actually several hundred miles into the Atlantic when Reynolds reported that the Speedwell was once more taking on water faster than it could be pumped out. The ships returned to England, this time to Plymouth, where the Speedwell was thoroughly examined and no serious fault found. Even so, it was decided that the journey would continue without her. For various reasons, only 102 passengers of the original 120 continued on the Mayflower from Plymouth. There was a suspicion that Reynolds, the Speedwell's master, was deliberately causing the ship to leak as he no longer wished to go to America. So, the Mayflower continued across the Atlantic to America alone. Join our community of history memorial and crime enthusiasts. Subscribe for regular updates on captivating historical stories and intriguing crime mysteries. Don't miss out on the next thrilling episode. Hit that subscribe button now. And please do comment and like this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.